Welcome back to another edition of the Course Creation Incubator Podcast. I'm Gina Onativia, your course coach, consultant, digital strategist, whatever you want to call me, I am here for you to help you get excited about your course creation and your marketing, help you build the business of your dreams. Now, my husband, Alex, and I have tennis on the brain all the time. Total obsession. We check the scores daily. We're constantly watching any tournament (laughs) that is on TV. And as a result, our eight-year-old Tristan loves tennis. Now, where does this love for tennis come from? Because I got Alex hooked. And then as a result, we got our son hooked. And it comes from my mom, who, when I was growing up, had Agassi and Sampras and Edberg and Celis and Graf and Becker on the TV all the time. She would watch all the slams. And I couldn't help but love watching with her. And her excitement and passion for the sport was so contagious. I didn't even play that much tennis. I played a lot of different sports, but during the summer I'd play it here and there, but I loved watching it. And I loved the athleticism and the competition around tennis. So my mom's passion for it really led me to share my passion with Tristan. Now, what I love is that Tristan is influencing his friends. Two of his closest friends decided to come to tennis camp with him because Tristan raved about it. And he raves about how he plays tennis with his group, his clinic. And they both went to camp with Tristan. And now they're absolutely bonkers about tennis. (laughs) Now he's eight. And got to keep in mind, these are two eight-year-old boys who never knew anything about tennis before. And I'm thinking to myself, whispering to myself, my kid is a freaking influencer in his little micro way. So you never know how you're going to influence someone. He's just talking to his closest friends at school about how much he was enjoying his group. He wasn't telling them, hey, you got to play this. He was just talking up his own experience, which influenced them to want to play. So again, you never know who or how you're influencing someone. You never know how you're changing mindset. I know it feels sometimes like no one's listening. But I tell you, they're listening. There are people listening and they're watching you. There are people you are influencing and transforming. If my eight-year-old can influence a couple of his friends, you can influence others as well. So I want you to keep that in mind because I just thought this was the cutest darn thing. Because when something great happens, I always want to share it on this podcast. You're like my diary now. (laughs) Speaking of tennis and sports, today I want to talk about your game plan. And the question to ask when you're tackling your course and streamlining your course creation and even shortcutting your time to get to market. Because you know this, I want you guys getting your courses done and out to market. And I want to shortcut you as much as possible as part of that process. So get your game face on because we're going to talk about your game plan to shortcutting your course creation success. Now, when I worked for Tony Robbins, there's three learnings. I mean, there was a lot of learnings, let's be honest, but three that really stood out for me in terms of what we're talking about for this episode. One, model the best. Find who's the best at whatever you want to do and then model after them. That could be their business model. That could be how they're putting out their course. That could be how they're marketing their course. Maybe they taught their webinars or they did a certain campaign that you thought were really cool and you followed all their emails. You opted in. You followed that campaign from the beginning to the end and you thought, I'm going to model that. I want you to model those who have gone before you and have achieved a success. The second learning that I took away from working with Tony is to ask questions, to stay curious, to get to the bottom of something and to not be afraid to ask dumb questions because I'd rather ask dumb questions than assume I know what is going on. What's that quote from Socrates? I know that I know nothing, right? That's how you stay curious because we're all a blank slate here learning. And that's a really great perspective to come as a course creator because we're teaching students who really know very little about this expertise, about this topic that you are about to bring to the forefront. So starting with that blank slate and knowing where your students are coming from is a really helpful tool for us as course experts. 
Now, the third piece that I learned from Tony, amongst the many others, is to start with a framework. Don't start from scratch. Think about who has that framework that you can use as a foundation and branch out from there. Course creators can sometimes think, and I've seen this happen, that, oh, I'll just put my expertise out there and then the course will just abracadabra fall into place. <laughs> I've had a couple of people, a couple of course creators in the last few weeks come to me with partially built out courses that I could tell they didn't start with a framework because the course felt disjointed or all over the place because they didn't have that solid foundation to start with. So I thought I'll give you that framework. I'll walk through five questions. This is a start, by the way. It is part of a game plan download that I have. It's a game plan freebie. And there's 15 questions that set you up for success. That's really a framework of how to build your course and do your course marketing. But I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. 15 questions is a lot, especially to cover in a podcast. So I'm going to start with five. Then you could download the freebie and get the other questions to help you shortcut your course creation success. So if you go to coursecreationboutique.com slash game plan, you can download that freebie and I'll put it in the show notes as well. And I walk through my five phases of course creation, my five phase process, and those 15 questions to help guide you. Also in this game plan, I talk through three elements for a best selling course idea. It's jam packed with value. I want to make sure you have this framework as a foundation for your course creation and your marketing and your selling. All right, let's get to that first question is how do I know what content to put in my course? I mean, that's a great question, right? We're all asking that. <laughs> you likely have so much great content. How do you know what's really suitable for your program? The first question is, how do I know what content to put in my course? I mean, this is such a great question, right? Cause you likely have so much awesome content, figuring out what content is really suitable for my program. And I always bring it back to the transformation or the course promise, the result that you really want to bring people. What's the plan? What are you actually going to do for them? And going back and starting there. And by the way, if you don't know your result, if you don't know what you're delivering for people, then dig, dig a little bit because you want to think through your course or your program, that result and what you're bringing for people. So important. That really dictates the content that goes inside of your course. So first and foremost, please make sure you have that result or that transformation you're providing. And then you're ready for my posted exercise process. I'll link to it in the show notes because it'll help give you parameters around what you're putting inside the course in terms of leading them to a transformation. Second question, how do I not go overboard with my course content? Now that's the real follow-up to question one, right? Everyone wants to under promise and over deliver. This posted exercise process really helps you to figure it out because I encourage you to do four or five overarching steps or pillars or sections, whatever you want to call it, and then figure out the lessons or your videos that you want to have inside the course underneath that. And how you not go overboard is remember you're, you're here for the transformation. You don't have to give them everything. We get lost a lot of times in our course promises when we try to over promise or think we need to deliver the world. So keep that course promise tight. Keep that result that we just talked about in question one, keep it on the tight side, make sure there's parameters around it. You want to give them a room to start maybe, and not a house, not an entire house. Third question, how will I deliver my course? The great news is there's a lot of different ways, great ways to deliver a course nowadays. You could do direct to camera audio with slides, live classes via zoom or another streaming service, and then cut that up. You could deliver a course in person. Say you're on stage. You could do part on stage, part on Zoom. You could do demos, interviews as part of a course. The fun thing is, and you guys know I talk about this all the time, is course creation is not what? It is not one size fits all. It is what you make of it. Think about what's the best way I can deliver my course for what my students want and how I want to deliver it. Don't feel like you're limited. Check out a bunch of different programs. I love looking at different courses and seeing how people deliver because there's not just one path. Think about your audience and what will make your course easy to consume. For example, if your audience is a bunch of busy moms, they probably don't have time to watch longer videos. Think about maybe including some audio or breaking your videos down to bite-sized segments. Be honest with yourself about what you will create. 
Now, a lot of course creators get nervous about being on video. That's going to hold you back. Start with something you know you can create, such as doing video with slides, where they simply hear your voice. Okay, minimum viable product. And maybe you do a mix of formats, okay? You can mix and match depending on the content and what really serves your people. And what do you have available to you? Because minimum viable product, right? We want to get the course out there. We want to get your content out there and get that transformation. We can upgrade or up level. You can go back to listen to 104 <laughs> as part of that process once you have put out that course, that 1.0. So question number four falls under phase two, which is course scripting. So in phase one, we're talking about outlining in phase two of my course creation process, we are scripting. Question number four is how do I organize all of my content into specific scripts? Now I'm a big fan, once you've done my post exercise, to think in terms of overarching steps or lessons and then creating documents. This could be Google Docs, Word Docs, Trello, Whatever it is, some people use it notes, some people use Evernote, whatever it is, I don't care what system you use as long as you're consistent with it. Whatever it looks like, I want you to do one document or one piece per script so you don't feel like you're overwhelmed. Once you're ready for scripting, I want you to check out my podcast where I break down the formula, which I'll list in the show notes as well, which breaks down my scripting process and makes it very easy. And by the way, it leads into my fifth and final question for this episode, how do I avoid going into a black hole? <laughs> how you avoid going into a black hole with your scripting, with your content is really thinking through, is this lesson a must for my student or is it just something I want to include? Cause I think it's cool. <laughs> a lot of times you might feel like you want to include something, but your student doesn't really need it, especially for this first course. You can always do it in 2.0 or another online course. Another point is to abandon perfectionism. Done is better than perfect. Like we talked about in episode hundred, we're here to get your course out there, not to create the perfect course and go into a black hole or rabbit holes, whatever holes you call them. I had a client, this was years ago. We'd get on calls. We'd check in once a week and he would talk and talk about his content and nothing else would get done because he kept going down different rabbit holes. This guy had rabbit holes upon rabbit holes. Like you go in his backyard, there was holes all over the place. Now I don't let clients or my students do that anymore. I've learned from that because I've learned that you can't make progress when you're doing that. We, I, I'm all about imperfect progress, messy progress, and just know your students will get something out of this. If you've been thoughtful about what they really wanted and what they need, and provided the transformation for them, they will succeed. You have to keep that in mind in terms of your scripts or you might get stuck. You have to make the time for your scripts too. This is why I love when students go live and you just have outlines or ideas for your scripting bullets to help you get it done because it can be an intensive process with your scripting. Every time I do a done for you, it's an intensive time. If I do an accelerator class, it's an intensive time during scripting. So just know that you have to make the time for that. You have seasons of life where you're gearing up for something and you say, okay, this is going to take more time. How am I going to allow for this in my life, my career, my business, right? With my family, how can I get more support? That's how you avoid the black hole syndrome. I want you to download this game plan. So you are ready with your foundation, go to coursecreationboutique.com slash game plan. So you can see all those different questions that I've learned really move the needle in terms of your course creation. I could have asked you 50 or hundred questions, but I distilled it down to the 15 that I think really count. So download that freebie and let me know how you're doing. Drop me a line at course creation boutique. So I can hear more about you and how you're doing with your course creation and marketing. I'll see you guys next week. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss one episode. And until then, go create, be you and be brilliant and get it done.